when I was diagnosed many years ago, I realized that I wanted to um, uh, find a way to help not only tell my story with diabetes, but other people who are living with diabetes and chronic conditions. And um, it really opened up into something that, you know, has has truly been a blessing. Um, you know, uh, one of the things that I did create with Shia Biopharmaceutical was the first ever RV testing unit. So I remember I was in uh, Walmart parking lot and I saw the big red bus and I, th I thought, why isn't there one for diabetes? And uh, so I, I approached Shire, which was a biopharmaceutical company that I had been working with on a documentary and and they believed in what, what I wanted to do and we created this RV that went around, you know, being able to educate people on diabetes. We didn't get to the testing part, but <clears throat> it still was a great activation. And while I was doing that, Sean, I kind of realized that while I was doing TV in most of these cities, I felt like I wasn't really reaching the masses and I, and I wanted to be able to reach the masses. So I came up with this television show called Reverse. Okay, good morning, everybody. We have a special guest. We have uh, Mr. Charles Maddox here. Charles, can you hear me? Hey, how are you? Ken, how are you? Yeah, man, it's good to see you. Thanks for being here. For uh, I, I've been uh, sort of following your work for a couple of years now uh, on uh, various sort of social media uh, uh, outlets like Twitter and stuff like that. It's good to have you here. Uh, I think our missions are somewhat aligned. Uh, you're trying to bring some health to the world and uh, doing it through, I think, film and, and other things. Can you do me a favor and just kind of let us know a little bit about your background? I read a little bit. It's pretty impressive. But if you'll share that with the rest of us, that'd be great. <laughs> that, definitely. Um, excuse, I'm in Paris right now, and I, I, lo I lost my voice a little bit. So bear with me. Well, well, bonsoir, and uh, and uh, you know, I hope you're having a good time over there. I am. I am. So you know, obviously, um, for the last couple of years, I've been a, a, a TV and film producer. Um, a you know, long history in 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 music and entertainment started off. You know, making music, after the late legendary Bob Marley, um, Emmy Award nominated actor, um, the list goes on, published author with the, <clears throat> the Aid American Diabetes Association, um, uh, Blue Circle champion with the International Diabetes Federation, um, you know, speaking all around the world, TEDx, you know, this, that, and the other thing. But um, when I was diagnosed many years ago, I, I realized that I wanted to um, uh, find a way to help not only tell my story with diabetes, but other people who are living with diabetes and chronic conditions. And um, it really opened up into something that, you know, has, has truly been a blessing. Um, you know, uh, one of the things that I did create with Shia Biopharmaceutical was the first ever RV testing unit. So I remember I was in uh, Walmart parking lot, and I saw the big red bus, and I, th I thought, why isn't there one for diabetes? And uh, so I, I approached Shire, which was a biopharmaceutical company that I had been working with on a documentary, and and they believed in what what I wanted to do, and we created this RV that went around, you know, being able to educate people on diabetes. We didn't get to the testing part, but <clears throat> it still was a great activation. And while I was doing that, Sean, I kind of realized that while I was doing TV in most of these cities, I felt like I wasn't really reaching the masses and I, and I wanted to be able to reach the masses. So I came up with this television show called Reverse and um, was able to find some funding with it, um, with uh, a Fresa, the inhaled insulin company, uh, Mankind. And we shot this beautiful series in Jamaica where we brought in five people who were dealing with type 2 diabetes <clears throat> and brought in some amazing experts to really um, show that with education, awareness, um, understanding of, of what to eat and how to eat, that we could and can change the course of someone's health over a period of time. Um, and over a short period of time, um, after they got back home, they were able to literally um, come off medication, lower medication, lose weight, so on and so forth. And we just had another season right now that um, that's called reverse, 
that stars Dr. Ken Berry, who you know is a very well known doctor, and and uh, also Maria Emmerich, who is a guru in her space as far as ketogenic. Dr. Jason Funk, um, who is you know the intermittent fasting guru, and we use intermittent fasting and ketogenic to show that we can reverse type two diabetes. And, you know, you look at someone like Lisa, who was featured on the first and the second season. She's lost upwards of, I think, 60 pounds and came off the insulin pump after 13 years. So, and and we have more stories just like that, <clears throat> letting people know that, you know, with diet and exercise and, and, and the right education and some inspiration that you really can take back your health. And and reverse aging in many senses, right? Working on a series right now with some major doctors on a longevity piece, but even the longevity piece really uh, has components of uh, keto, has components of low carb, has components of uh, intermittent fasting, um, uh, and and it's very similar in many ways to being able to reverse diabetes, some of the, the same components is that. Yeah, type 2 diabetes, uh, and it's wonderful that uh, people like yourself and Ken and Marie, and I know all those folks pretty well, um, have been able to do sort of th these types of things. Um, it is something that is becoming more and more prevalent, as, as is obesity, and they're, they're certainly linked. Um, how did you, like when you first discovered you had, I guess you said you had type 2 diabetes yourself, I guess. How did that go about? What was the story with that? I mean, did you start feeling bad one day? Was it, was it shocking to you, or did it run in the family? Or how did how did how did you take? Yeah. Obviously, you took it the right way and got rid of it. But what was what was it like being diagnosed with that? Sean, it was totally shocking. I mean, literally, it was a weekend, and I was at a friend's house, and I just was using the bathroom, urinating just a little bit, and I mean, more than frequently, you know, and. And I just, for whatever reason, I don't know if I'm a hypochondriac, but I said, you know what, I'm going to go to a little local uh, Saturday clinic um, because I had a good doctor at that time and I had been you know, getting regular checkups and they didn't see anything that would cause alarm. And uh, the guy went back and he said, I came back and he said, do you have a family history of diabetes? And I said, diabetes. And to be honest, as a black male in America, not knowing what diabetes was, I was shocked. And he said, well, I can give you medication for it. And I thought, medication? You know, how did I get here? So I said, no, and, and I didn't want any medication. I figured, you know what, I got in the car, I literally thought I was going to die because, you know, at the end of the day, nobody wants to be diagnosed with anything. So um, I, I went home and, and got on the internet and it was a horrible time trying to find any information really that was, you know, worth uh, keeping or positive or anything that really, uh, you know, that I could utilize. And I kind of said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to use God's diet per se. Uh, and I, I just started walking. I used to go to the gym really heavy. You know, I was lifting all these heavy weights, you know, those type of guys. Sean, you got a, the, the upper half is great and the bottom half, you know, you're not working, right? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> didn't do any legs, didn't do cardio, but sure, did uh, the arms and the chest. And, and uh, I said, yeah, I'm just going to start walking. And I started walking a ton and then started jogging a bit and, you know, and just went to lean meat, protein, um, stayed away from every, just got on water, walked a ton and literally lost by like 20 pounds in, in 30 days. And um, that's really how I started on, on, on that. But it was shocking. It was definitely, uh, you know, I look at it in two ways that it, it allowed me to actually see where I'm at health wise, as far as, you know, where I'm at now in the future, because had I not been diagnosed, had I ignored those small symptoms, who knows where I might be today, right? I mean, might have been dead, you know, because, you know, we know that with, with diabetes comes other things such as hypertension, cholesterol issues, you know, other things like that. So I look at it as a blessing and I use that blessing to try to educate other people and inspire other people that, you know, with the right, with the right, you know, tools and the right team that, you know, we don't have to, we don't have to live a certain way. And we know that I always say too, as well, if what I'm eating is causing me to, you know, have health issues, 
then I really got to wake up, you know, just like somebody who might smoke. If you're smoking and you have cancer, you know, that, that, you know we, we could take back a lot of what, we, what we're, the harm we're doing to ourselves right now. Yeah, it's interesting because you, you mentioned, you know, I, I was just going to the bathroom a little more. You know, one of the classic hallmarks of diabetes, polydipsia, I mean, excessive thirst or polyuria going to the bathroom. And a lot of people, you know, they just kind of, it's kind of normal, it's a little extra thirsty, but it could be that. And it's, it's good that you point that out. The other thing is, you know, probably it didn't happen on one day. You probably had this stuff brewing for 10 years probably before, before it finally spilled over. So it's, it's just, it's like accumulation of time. And the other thing you mentioned, diabetes does lead to many things. And according to this 2021 Women's Health Initiative, the analysis shows that diabetes increases your risk for heart disease by tenfold. You know, 10x is your risk for heart disease. So it's a huge, huge issue there. Let me ask you about, because you, 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 you correctly point out that when you go and you go on the internet to search for something. There's so much information and conflicting information. Some of it's depressing. You get on there and it's how oh, you got to take this drug and that drug and it'll be on it for the rest of your life. Or some people tell you to go to plant-based, some people tell you to go, you know, keto or meat-based or whatever. And it's very confusing. How did you, I mean, when you're sorting through this, how do you sort of figure this out? I mean, I mean, obviously at the end of the day, you do what works for you, I think. And, and I know for me and many other like me, the, 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 the type of diet we use, provide such, such satiety, very similar to some of these low carb ketogenic diets. It's like, it makes it easier. But when you're doing your shows and, and it's great, but I think everybody would love to go down to Jamaica for a vacation. You know? And Hey man, if that's what it takes, but not everybody has that luxury, obviously. So you got to do it where you are, but what kind of factors are you, yeah. are you finding or what kind of different, what kind of challenges do you find that the average person comes to you with diabetes or, or obesity or they're trying to reverse things? What do you got to, what, what kind of things do you have to address? You know, and, and and great point. I think you know there are level there are levels of health and there are levels of being healthy. And initially, when I was diagnosed, I thought I was healthy. I thought I was eating healthy. I remember I used, and this is when I had cookbooks on health. And I remember thinking that uh, ginger ale was healthier for me because it had ginger in it. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> they're relative, maybe maybe it's slightly more healthy than Coke. I don't know, but it's you know anyway, funny, yeah. So, I mean, there are levels of health. And so what I mean by that is someone may actually think that, you know, hey, if I um, was an example, somebody was saying something they were eating, like we look at rice, right? And we think, okay, well, you know, is is brown rice better than, than white rice? Well, yeah, it may be. But, you know, if, if, if rice turns into these carbs and turns into sugar and so on and so forth, um, you know, it's like saying white rice is a, on a scale is a 10 and brown rice may be a seven, but it's still on that scale. So I think that, you know, a lot of what I see, to be honest, it, at times it is shocking because you see people who have serious health issues and you're like, listen, just please stop eating like that. Then they'll send you a picture of something that you're eating and you're like, oh, my God, you know what I'm saying? So I think I think we play a big role in, in a lot of what we do in a sense that once again, um, eat, I don't eat as much, you know what I'm saying? And I mean, I really don't. I, and my portions or sizes are, are, are very are much smaller. I, I, me personally, I love to, I love low carb or, or at times even no carbs um, because I see what it does for my body when I stay away from the carbs and eat healthy. And when we know what we're putting in our mouth, whether it's a nice salad or a nice steak or a nice piece of baked chicken or something like that with, with something that, you know, complements that, it just feels so much better. So I think, you know, what, what, what we're doing here is really trying to show that there are levels of health and levels of healthy and that, you know, really arming yourself with the right tools, like even knowing what to be tested for the doctor. You know, many people don't have no idea what, what a cardiac CRP is. And, you know, those are levels that should be checked, you know, when, when dealing with our overall health as far as inflammation and oxidative stress. Um, many people don't understand the benefits of, 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 I wouldn't even call them diets, but lifestyles. So really trying to introduce that. And I don't think, you know, we look and say, okay, the keto diet is, 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 you know, the only way to go or this, that, and the other thing we introduced it because we wanted people to see what, what it could do uh, versus, you know, something else. And I think after you implement, you know, even a keto diet and maybe go down to a low carb diet, you could see 
the changes in, 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 in your health greatly. So, but I think a lot of times the people that I deal with, they really need the education and the inspiration. You know, when you get literally five minutes in a doctor's office and they're rushing you out of there and you don't get a chance to ask questions at times, Sean, you're even scared to ask the right, the, 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 a certain question because they seem so busy. Um, then how can we really, you know, care for patients to give them, you know, the, the advice that they need? And we know that doctors aren't, based, you know, they're not trained on nutrition. So being able to tell you what to do and how to do it um, is, is it can be a, a burdensome for people. That's one of the reasons why we created this series. So we could bring all the modalities together so people didn't have to go through this, go to find out what a nutrition is, find out what a dietitian is, find out, you know, how to exercise and what to eat and bring them all together. So, um, and then also, again, we live in a, in a society where they're just pushing these medications on us first. And I think that also hinders people because once you get the medication, they feel like they can go right back to eating the same way and, and, and continuing the same habits. Yeah, I think that's one of the problems is a lot of people are even told that with a dietitian. Well, just you know, just take the medicine, medicine, and, and you can kind of eat where you want. Don't don't deprive yourself. Is kind of the, the motto we get. Um, you know, when I look at what's what's available on me, and I don't watch a lot of TV, admittedly, but I mean, there's some really goofy stuff on there. You know, it's just like. They'll put anything as long as it, you know, it's just stuff you're like, why is this even on TV? But a, but a show like yours, which I think arguably would help, you know, potentially millions of people. Do you have a hard time getting that sold to the to the the networks, to, to people? Is it, is it challenging to get this message out there? You know, um, that's a great question. You know, I remember when I did the first season and and, it, and it's really disheartening. And um, I, I locked myself away literally for about four weeks. And I called everybody and anyone in 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 the health and diabetes space, and didn't get literally any bites. And I'm talking from ad agencies to pharma to device companies to you name it. And you would think that you know it would be uh, uh, you know open arms and welcome. And what's interesting, Sean, when I first came out the first season, it was called Reversed. And this was before saying that type 2 diabetes can be diverse, reverse and all these big companies are out here making, you know, big money to, to reverse type 2 diabetes. And people literally were in the business with like, you know, how could you talk about and say that diabetes can be reversed and, and trashing me and stuff like that and writing bad stories about me. I remember one guy, um, he wrote for one of these publications and, and, um, and, and I told them that reverse meant reversing the mental, physical, spiritual, emotional state of the person. It wasn't about reversing diabetes. It was reverse giving them the, the tools. And through those tools, they could see, you know, tremendous results from, from on their diabetes. And even with that explanation, he's still trash. Um, we actually went to, to shoot in Jamaica. And for whatever reason, the, um, the sponsor had stat news fly in, you know, the big, big online publication stat news. And they would have like two days, barely saw anything and trash me like nobody else. I'm like, dude, you weren't even here long enough to see anything. You were here for two days, barely running around on set, trying to find bad things to say. Obviously they didn't like mankind. And I think they had a, a, a grudge on mankind, but it was sad because we did so much good work with that series. Um, the second series that just aired not too long ago with Dr. Kid Berry, Jason Fung, Maria Emmerich, and all those others, Keto Chow, Keto Mojo, um, all those great people. It was a little bit easier, right? Because we live in a different climate right now. Of course, the still the name is still called reversed. And you know, Big Pharma is not racing to give me money to talk about reversing type two diabetes. So we have to be creative in, in who we reach out to. So once again, utilizing ketogenic and intermittent fasting space, where there are some really good companies, even in low carb, we're able to see um, much more support uh, across the board. But no, you're right. I mean, um, I did another season on, on a different health topic, um, which was on cancer that was sponsored by 
company called Hope for Cancer out of, out of Mexico, which does amazing work. I mean, top tier. The place is the place. It's the most beautiful facility. Facility. The people are loving, caring, God fearing people, and you know they're not trying to you know make any miracles happen. They just do what they do. And right before the show was about to air on um, on Discovery, literally, I think two maybe two weeks, somebody and and we I had been working with Discovery the whole time doing edits and this that and the other thing, but I think they must have got wind of maybe they didn't do really digest who was the sponsor. And so they must have got wind and realized that, of course, Disney is owned by, I mean, Discovery is owned by Disney. And they probably bring in millions of dollars, tens of millions of dollars in pharmaceutical money. So two weeks before the show was here, they 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 pulled the show and they wanted to get all kind of information from, from the, the, the sponsor. They sent them all the information and they came back and they still just really didn't have a reason why they wanted to pull it. And ended up pulling it and having had to go to FYI to hear it over there. So, you know, when you are talking about ways to heal people naturally, um, of course, there's going to be some pushback. But, you know, I think the tide is changing. If we look at society right now, if we look at healthcare right now, there are great people like yourselves and others who are, are doing some tremendous work. And, and, and there are a lot of good people out here who want to hear about these things and want to heal themselves naturally and understand how they can reverse not only diabetes, but other conditions and, and, and live long and not, not live, you know, a rough 80 years, but, but uh, an amazing 90. Yeah. And that's, and that's a really two, two, two important parts, you know, the quality of life and then hopefully the longevity that goes with it. But clearly, you know, if you're not suffering from these things, your life is going to be better. Uh, Jamaica, I, you know, I, I had a chance to visit Jamaica about five or six years ago. I went to see Bob Marley's, you know, resting place, kind of an interesting experience yeah. up there, but it's, uh -huh. is Jamaica suffering similarly to us with, with problems with diabetes and obesity or, or cause I know you've got some ties to there. Yeah. Is there any, any efforts there and, and why Jamaica? Is that just because it's tropical and yeah. your backgrounds from there or what's, what's the reason for that? Definitely very much so. A lot of the Caribbean islands are actually suffering. And I want to say Jamaica might be the highest in amputation in Jamaica, um, in all the, the, the Caribbean. Um, and, you know, when we look at some of the food, whether it's the Caribbean, or India, or places like that, or third world countries, you know, some of the things that we use that, you know, helps fill us up, right? If you, you don't have a lot of money and, and rice is always available, if you don't have enough money and flour is always available, we become masters at making things with flour and rice and a little bit of gravy. Um, so yeah, that, that that has been a cause of much concern. And you know they have you know diabetes associations out there, but they're not really you know that effective. Um, and once again, it is hard getting people who love a certain type of food to change that food. I mean, you know, I me mean, myself, I love Jamaican food. I mean, it's nothing like it. And to get up in the morning and have, you know, what we call some, some fried dumplings, <clears throat> which is flour fried with some, you know, ackee and salt fish and stuff like that. It's almost very hot, you know, filled with a lot of uh, salt and, and things like that. So it is very hard. And, and I think that's part of the issue why, it is skyrocketing in the Caribbean overall because we're, we we love our food and and being even you know looking at looking at size, you know really you know we we like people like being big. They think if you're if you're bigger you're healthy you know or you you know you're looking good being a little plump. Um, so that that can affect certain things too as well. Um, you know obviously I'm I'm shooting an amazing series right now in the United States. States call our body is thy temple, which focuses on the disparities in the community, the black community, but also in the black church and the role that the church can help play in, in, in the lives of people and their health. So, you know, we're interviewing some of the biggest and the best in the country. And once again, just trying to understand it from a perspective of that, you know, what we really put in our mouth is, is, is key to our longevity and, and, um, you know, that's really what it comes down to at the end of the day. Yeah, it's interesting because you, you mentioned the black community and we see a disproportionate amount of, of 
uh, obesity, diabetes affecting a little bit more so than some of the other 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 different groups. Why do you think that is? And and, and I mean, what efforts, different efforts, do you think it means to reach this community? I mean, obviously having someone in the community makes sense, but to me, I mean, it's, it seems like there's a reluctance to adopt a low, more of a reluctance to adopt a lower carb uh, diet in that particular community. Or, or am I imagining that? What are your thoughts on that? No, you know, I mean, you know, one of the biggest things is access to food, you know, and, um, you know, I, I, I was talking to someone while we were shooting and, you know, while you may have a, a Walmart, you know, within, let's say, a mile radius of some communities, you know, some communities don't have Walmart within a 10 mile radius and or somewhere where they can access, you know, fresh fruits and vegetables. Um, so, you know, a lot of times it's it's based on, uh, as one person said in, in, in uh, on the film, your zip code is is it can be based on the quality of your life and the longevity of, of your life. And, the, you know, so um, a lot of it is access. Um, we also have um, when it comes to health, you know, just stereotypes and people are in a lot of the minority communities can be fearful of of health providers and the government. If you can look back at certain experience, exper experiments like Tuskegee and so on and so forth. So there is a, a, a lack of trust, right? You know, look at COVID now and you, you feel like they're trying to pump something into us and vaccine that, you know, that we don't know what's going to happen in, in years. Um, and then also what our parents have taught us. So if our parents were teaching us a certain way to, to eat, this is what we know. And then we end up teaching our children that and so on and so on. So in the black community, you know, when we you know, wake up in the morning and have, the, you know, not that anything wrong with, <clears throat> with bacon and eggs, but, you know, you have the bacon and eggs, you have the sweet tea, you have the, the, the things of that nature and tons of salt, tons of sugar, you know, the, the, the cornbread, the collard greens and so on and so forth. And um, it's just something that is, uh, you know, overtly put inside of us that we have to try to break. And also, you know, not to get too deep, but some of this stuff even comes from you know, interviewing some great people that come from uh, back as far as back as, as, as slavery days, as, as far as treatment and understanding how, you know, certain people didn't want to, you know, treat African-Americans um, and, and didn't want to help them as far as their health or, or go to a doctor or some people just refuse to even do them. And, and uh, you know, one Indian gentleman, or no, white, white gentleman actually, who has studied this, um, it, sometimes people's health were based on their, I hate to say their slave master, how they treated them. So if their slave master took care of them, then, then their health was better. If they didn't, then it was bad health. So it kind of is like a generational thing. And uh, that, that, you know, that we're looking into. So it's really interesting, once again, overall, how disparities change um, uh, uh, throughout time and, and where we're at now and um, and what we can do about it. And, and I think that, you know, there are people trying to do something about it. There are, you know, obviously programs that try to reach the, the church, try to reach barbershops, try to reach things of that nature. Um, I would love to see more you know, ads from these big companies on health, right? I mean, it'd be lovely if you could see pharma, pharmaceutical companies run an ad saying, you know, make sure you get tested or, you know, make sure you eat right. Um, <laughs> but um, unfortunately, they, they're not doing that. So um, it's going to be a slow roll as far as how we try to educate people on in the communities on, on, on such things as diabetes and, and all these chronic illnesses. Yeah, I, I don't see the pharmaceutical ads telling people to eat, eat right anytime soon. I don't think that's <laughs> happening, quite honestly. And, you know, you talk about a, a mistrust in the government. I think everybody's kind of at that point right now. I think all of us are sort of a little skeptical with what's been yeah. going on. And I think, you know, you, you point out the, the, the multi-generational effect of, you know, just dietary patterns. You know, it's just why do folks from, East you know, Eastern Asia eat differently than, than someone from Scandinavia? I mean, it's, it's this multi-generational effect and what you know, what kind of informed us as to what our diet is, you know, um, like I mentioned, not everybody gets the opportunity to go down to Jamaica and be on a TV show and have this all this support. So what, what are you finding, you know, I mean, you can provide the information and I, I, you know, I spend most of my life trying to provide information to people, but even with that, even when people find out what's the right thing, they still don't do it a lot of times, you know, even with all these 
CGM monitors. You can, you can strap something on and says, hey, you shouldn't be eating all this pancakes with syrup because your blood glucose is going to go through. They still do it anyway. So how do you how do you get people to actually make the change besides the, the education? Education is part of it, but what, what do you need beyond that? Or do you, or you think- Yeah, you, you're right about that. And it's very frustrating. You know, one of the people who I try to help most is uh, an older Jamaican guy who's like a father to me. And uh, it, it, I mean, he's like on two different medications for diabetes, you know, probably one or two for cholesterol, one or two for uh, um, uh, um, hypertension. And he sends me what he cooks every day. I've had interventions where I've brought him to Jamaica. I, I even the other day had a, a health coach try to sit down with him, came to his house, went to his house. And he literally turned on the lady. And it was like, you know, and now he sends me the same pictures of this, you know, grease filled food filled with sodium and carbs and starch and sugars and stuff like that. And it's 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 heartbreaking, you know, and even some of the people on our show, you know, um, it, you know, we're all going to slip. I slip, you know, I'm in Paris right now. And trust me, I probably gained about two pounds since I've been here. Right. But. We know what we need to do and how to get back. That's the key. Um, you know, having a day or two or three where we kind of, you know, go in the wrong direction is one thing. But reverting back to those habits, you know, can be can be life changing. And, you know, once again, I think that when I try to instill this, it's it's trying to reach the people who want to be reached. Because there are people who really want to be reached <clears throat> and really want to know this information. And, you know, we just do the best that we can because, you know, we can we can teach them how to fish. And uh, that doesn't mean they're going to continue fishing. Um, so I, I really it does. It is heartbreaking at times. But, you know, there's a lot of people to help. And um, and and I think we also we also Sean, have to get people conditioned Right, because a lot of the messaging out here is so splintered. What I mean by that is, you know, you have this doctor saying this on this podcast. This one is saying that. That one is saying that. We're not working together. You know, one of the things I just launched was my own health network called Your Health Network, Why You Are Health Network. And I'm changing it to the Bloom Network. But I wanted to create a network where we can come together and talk health and share amazing TV shows, movies, podcasts, be a, a real network of people, stand together in solidarity and not just over here, over here, over here. Because when we don't have solidarity, these companies love that. They love that we can't stand together and be one strong, powerful voice. Can you imagine if a million of us showed up somewhere saying we demand pharmaceutical companies to do this differently. Or we demand the government to do something like this differently. But if you have 300 over here, 500 over there, 1,000 over there, it never gets done, right? So, um, you know, we, 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 we try to work with who wants to, who wants to be saved for a sec and, um, and keep leaving the messaging out there for those who still want to hear the message. Yeah, I mean, that's a great, you know, we, we always hear united we stand, uh, divided we fall. And, I, and we see a lot of divisiveness being pushed for whatever reasons for different things right now. Do you have a, when you're working with people, there's a period of time where you kind of say, man, this guy got, you know, he's got it or she's got it. You know, there's a, there's a, there's a, there, there's a threshold of something happens. It, it, maybe it's a time frame. Maybe it's the fact that they can start teaching other people. But how do you know when, when you can kind of, when you can kind of let off on, on the, on the pressure or the support? Do you, is there any kind of signals that you get th- this person finally gets it? You know, uh, Sean, I'm going to tell you, sometimes, you know, you, especially when we do shows, you don't, you, you have a feeling and you hope and uh, you really don't know. You think you do at times. And, you know, there's been times where I'm like, okay, this person is going to get it. And, uh, and they may get it for a while they're there. Then when they get back home, it becomes a different situation. So, um, but, you know, I think you know, one of our biggest successes has been Lisa and um, she got it. She got it the first time. She got it the second time. I think the first time her husband was alive and kind of great guy, um, but he wasn't the best influence on her. So I think because of that, 
it kind of stumbled her. We also have really, really um, make sure of who's around us as far as our influences, right? We could we could be on the street narrow and, you know, wife or husband or sister or daughter brings in that food with the chocolate or, or takes us to, to dinner and, and dinner is... Uh, you know, a ton of carbs. And and next thing you know, we're, you know, looking over at somebody's plate and they got that great pizza pie that looks fantastic with the arugula on it. It happened to me the other day. You know, I'm in Paris and I'm like, you know, having a glass of wine. And I look to the side and this guy's got this amazing looking pizza. And I'm like, oh man, you know. Um, and then of course, you know, you have the 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 croissants in the morning and, and all this kind of stuff. So it, it's one of those things where you really have to even be sure of who's around us and sit down with those few persons and say, listen, I need to do this. and I need you to support me and I need you to fight with me because this is life and death. And I think, you know, one of the strongest things that we try to put out there is this truly is life or death. You know, one of the things that we see, even from a, a standpoint of mortality, is that we in, we went to an interview at a funeral home the other day, and you know the mortality rate of people dying of natural causes is through the roof, and it's based on uh, what we eat at times. You know, it's not gunshots, it's not you know uh, things of that nature. Coronavirus, it's right now, it's it's literally what we've been eating and and how that's affected us. Whether it's heart attack, stroke. Um, you know, there's pl- blood pressure issues and diabetes, and we know that diabetes affects every organ in the, in the, in, in the body and, and literally attacks every organ. And um, you know, it's the number one you know cause of, of everything from from heart attacks to to, to kidney disease. Clearly, uh, people that are unfamiliar with diabetes don't realize how pervasive it is as far as what it does to the body. And you're right; every single cell in our body is affected by every organ system. You can see, you know, whether it's eyesight, kidneys, liver, you know, pancreas, muscles, bones, everything, your brain, everything is affected by diabetes. So it's not something you you want for, for anybody. When, you know, again, when people go home from your show, I mean, or, or people that don't have the opportunity to be on your show, what are the, what can they do in the home? Uh, I mean, because I, I think there's, you mentioned you're in Paris and, I, you know, I was in Paris a few years ago and, yeah, there's food everywhere. It's, a, you know, it's kind of an interesting place to be. Um, there is, uh, you know, you're going to have to face that. You're going to have to deal with that stuff. So how do you get the tools to, because I don't think that, you know, Krispy Kreme or these people to make the, make the pastries are going away. They're not, they're not going to go away. They're still going to be there. They're, yeah. they're, they're always going to be. Yeah. So how do we, how do we navigate that world and, uh, and, uh, you know, and, and be successful? You know, I, I think discipline is really key. Discipline is, is, is to be honest, is everything. Even when navigating um, testing, right? We know we we should be testing um, at least at least twice a day, at least once a day, if you have diabetes. Um, and we know that a lot of people don't test. Um, discipline is everything. In you know whether it's just having a good walk or knowing when to push it to the side. So you know, even though I've had one or two days, hey, I'm away. And I'm, I'm I'm having one or two days where I am, <clears throat> you know, per se falling off the wagon a little bit. You know, it, it gets to a point where you say, okay, I'm done. And, you know, let's say it's tomorrow. I'll probably start a 24-hour fast. I love fasting. You know, fasting is a is a reset of the body in many ways and does tremendous things for us. And then from there, I'll probably go to you know, yeah, me personally, I, I can do well with one meal a day. And that might be a salad with a steak or a piece of baked chicken or something of that nature. And um, um, and then if I go to two meals a day, once again, I still try to limit that to a certain amount of a certain amount of intake. So it might be a piece of fish with, um, you know, some some lettuce or I mean, some some uh, tomato slices. And everybody's different. You know, what works for me, you know, you're a bigger guy, you might need more because you're hitting that gym. But what works for me is making sure because once again, I know that with 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 a low carb and even a keto a ketogenic diet, it, it keeps that inflammation di- down for me and that oxidative stress <clears throat> and keeps my numbers where they should be. 
And and to be honest, I feel fine. You know, um, I eat when I'm hungry, per se, not just to eat. And I think that's the key at times. Yeah, it certainly is. I, I think, and, and again, I think we un, we undervalue the role of satiety in, in when we're prescribing diets. We, you know, people who just eat a certain amount of calories doesn't matter what it is. We hear some people advocating for that, and it's tough because people, you know, hunger is tough to deal with. But let me, I, I want to, you know, the point about testing and not enough, not, not enough people do it. And you're talking about, you know, I mean, you can finger stick yourself. There's CGMs. Most people. The, the finger sticks are what most people are still doing. And, you know, you got to jab your finger every time. And it kind of hurts a little bit for some people. And it costs a lot of money. I mean, those things add up. I mean, if you're testing yourself two, three, four, five times a day, like you probably should when you wake up, when you go to bed and after before and after every meal, perhaps, uh, then you're, you're running into money. And I know that they're on the horizon and maybe here very shortly, there'll be like phone apps where you can put your finger on a, on a, on a phone and you'll have blood glucose. That might be a resource of, uh, a funding for it for your next film i'm just thinking about those guys that, that make those monitors because you know again whoever's making money is going to fund you right if they could if you if you can do that and you know that, that that's a that's a thought on that but uh what you know as far as uh, so how long remind me again how long has it been since you had the diabetes diagnosis and how long have you been reversed now personally um it, it i was diagnosed probably 13 years ago okay. and um i would say that at, at very early on, without even knowing, to be honest with you, I had reversed it. Um, my numbers have never really gone past, let's say, as far as the A1C is six. Um, so, so you know, it, it really early on. But once again, within the last maybe two years or three years, I really started understanding health differently. So understanding what you know, low carb and keto and so intermittent fasting was and so on and so forth. You know, before I met Dr. Jason Vaughn, I never knew what intermittent fasting was. And uh, and that was, you know, maybe three years ago. So once again, there are levels to it. And I think that right now I'm 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 at a good level of of understanding on some of these things and and growing because I want to. You know, like I said, looking at this whole longevity and anti-aging space that, you know, may be a little bit scientific, but there are things that we can do right now. You know, that's why you, <clears throat> if you look at our genes and certain people who you say, man, how could that person be 60 years old? They look like they're 35, you know, um, and, then, and then how can that person be 25? They look like they look like they're 65. Not there's anything wrong with 65. Don't give me a point. I'm right around the corner. Um, but but internally, it's where really where you're at. You know, where, where, do you, where are your organs, your organs at, you know, right at, at, at 30 or 40 or 50 um, and being able to, uh, you know, turn that head, that, that those that clock back. And, uh, you know, we're, you know, we're, there, there are people who even use, you know, things like metformin, you know, to to uh, to uh, which is, you know, the times you call it the anti-aging drug. Um, and we know that a lot of a lot of uh, doctors does even take that just just because um you know it, of its uh, you know, effects to you know uh help with you know sugar and things like that uh, so there are there are a lot of uh you know things on the line and you're right um yeah, cgm i think is eight hundred dollars or something like that so an average person can't afford that but it it is a, a valuable tool and hopefully it'll it'll be more affordable um, you, you would think that the government should help supplement those things when uh, <clears throat> they could spend, you know, billions of dollars in, in war, but can't make sure that, uh, you know, folks are getting the, the treatment that they deserve or, or breaks on school or some pay and low of school loans. So, um, so yeah, so, uh, you know, hopefully, hopefully very soon, it'll be a little bit more, uh, easier for people to access. Let me ask you this, because you mentioned you have a, another film series, your, your Body's a Temple or something along that nature, I can't remember. And we're seeing a lot of uh, BOPO, body positivity, where people are kind of celebrating morbid obesity and saying it's kind of okay to be that way. And, you know, you don't want to say hate on that particular person for where they are, and you shouldn't. But I mean, at the same time, we're getting kind of mixed messaging that, hey, it's okay to be as heavy as whatever. And, and do you have any concerns about that? Or are you Are you fine with that? Or what are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I'm not, it, it's interesting. You find a lot of people 
who I, I know real skinny guys who uh, have ravaging type two diabetes. And, and I know people who are very overweight, who don't have any diabetes, no cholesterol. And, and I admire them. I'm looking at them like, my goodness, what is going on here? I got this, that, and the other thing. And, and I'm watching what I'm eating, doing all this kind of stuff, so on and so forth. But I think that, you know, that is, it's not a, it's not a good thing to put out there because at the end of the day, we should all be working on, on our best health. And, you know, I think, you know, I look at someone like Lizzo and I think she probably puts that out there, <clears throat> but she also is, you know, tries to fight the, the, the weight issue and health issue. But, you know, a lot of times they may not have, you know, diabetes, or cholesterol, but they may have something else that they, that they can pass away from that hits them because of the, the 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 weight issues. So I think that we should all be striving to 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 live our best and most healthiest life. Because one thing I know is being sick is no fun, and going to doctor's offices and having to go get tests can not only be detrimental as far as financial, but it could also um, it's not a lot of fun. And I, and I see a lot of people who are in dialysis centers who didn't make the change. I see people who are getting all kind of crazy grafts on their feet that have literally rotten away um, because of type 2 diabetes. Um, and, and I've been in the hospital where literally, you know, not to freak anyone out, but you're just like looking like, oh, my God you know, what is this? I mean, literally you're seeing down to the bone on somebody's leg. And, and it's because of type two diabetes, not type one, but type two diabetes. Um, and, and that is preventable. Um, so, so, you know, Raja, who was Lisa's husband on the show, you know, passed away from type two diabetes and he could have made a change. He had all the possibilities. He was a young guy, I think he was maybe early 50s, and you know, had all the possibilities to make a change and left a beautiful wife uh, behind who I know he dearly loved because he didn't he didn't make that change. So um it really is a serious condition. And like someone says, <clears throat> let food be thy medicine, and that and medicine be thy food. And we should all be playing our own doctor at the end of the day. I hate to say it. Um, because there's nobody who can really look into where we're at as, as good as we are. Um, and and there are so many tools right now out here for us to access when it comes to um, living our best and most healthiest life. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's amazing. I, mean, I literally had people begging me to cut their leg off because it was so miserable and they're diabetic. And, you know, even afterward, they're still going back to drinking their Coca-Cola. And it's it's clearly... Uh, a real addiction issue and you know you point out Lizzo I mean she's a very talented talented musical artist and very popular and has a huge huge platform and um I I just you know it's tough to to sort of uh you know not feel sort of sorry for the situation in, in some some regard but at the same part I think if she had her preferences she would not want to be where she is you know from a from a from a size standpoint but you know you can't you know sort of vilify these people but at the same point point you, I mean, it's it's just a different, different uh, and difficult thing. What brings you to Paris, by the way? Are you shooting in Paris? I'm just kind of curious as to what, uh, what you're what you Con film, film Festival. So it's one of the biggest uh, film festivals in the world. And, and one thing I'd like to say, I think one of the, the, the reasons that made me change, and I think it's okay for us all to be a little bit this way, is vanity. There's nothing wrong with looking in that mirror and saying, man, I look good today. Uh, or I want to look good today. And I think, you know, you know, I, I want to look like I did when I was, unfortunately, I don't, but I want to look like I did when I was in high school, you know? Um, you know, you how many of us have those friends that, you know, we see on Facebook and we're like, Lord, what happened to them? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> We've got some friends that look like they're six months pregnant, and, you know, that we went to school and they look 20 years older. So I think vanity is not a bad thing at times to look in that mirror and say, let me get back to this. Let me not just from a physical standpoint, but from a mental, spiritual, and emotional standpoint, because you know, you feel so much better when you're doing the right thing always around. So um, um, 
you know, that, that, that that's what works for me. You know? you know, I can't remember who said this. I think it might have been like Deion Sanders or somebody look good, feel good, play good or something like that. And it, it yeah. it's more than just play good. But when you feel good, I mean, you perform better as a human. And, you know, I've made this point several times is when you're when you're healthy and you feel, you know, your body's working well, it, it's, it's good mentally. I mean, you just mentally feel better. And I think one of the problems we have greater in society, so many people feel bad. They're just they're just sick all the time. They don't feel good. They're depressed or anxious or angry their body doesn't work like it's supposed to it's frustrating and then we get a lot of this is just where this divisiveness and anger comes in because now we're just we've got these hair triggers and everybody's mad about everything else and so it's this greater service and just i mean just attempting to get people healthy and reverse their diabetes has a, a huge effects uh, beyond that um so you've you, you've filmed season two and it's it's up to see is, is there a season three coming out or what's what's going on now we're, we're, we're working with um what we're, what we're doing is um we're working on longevity series okay so we've got dr robert lufkin attached mm -hmm. um, uh, you probably know these folks we've got morgan levine mm -hmm. attached who's big into the longevity space we've got uh dr vidia oveda uh, who's um you know cardiologist um, so we've got, we've got a, a nice little, uh, some of the best of the best in anti-aging longevity, some device companies so on and so forth, because that will kind of mix the two as far as, you know, um, I'm trying to show how we could actually, um, reverse that, that, that aging clock per se and, uh, longevity overall health. So, um, but yeah, no, we would like to get back to another season three. I'm working on another season that I've teamed up with um, uh, Dr. Bernice King, who is Martin Luther King's daughter, um, on a season called Re uh, Reverse the Church. So we plan on going to into a mega church in Atlanta and reversing the health of a whole congregation. So we kind of want to take it to that next level where we're not just you know helping a few people, but we want to go into an old church and show that over over a, a few months that we can take a, a bunch of people from that church who, especially in the black community in the black church and show that with right education, the right tools, the right uh, 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 inspiration and the right push from their leaders that we could actually turn back, you know, come back in, in several months later and see, you know, several thousand pounds per se being lost. And, and, and and numbers dropping and people coming off medication and so on and so forth and and I think if we do this it can kind of send waves throughout um, every community we know that <clears throat> the Native Americans suffer with high rates of of diabetes and things like that we know that the Hispanic community suffers with high rates of diabetes diabetes and chronic conditions so we can do this on a large scale um, we can we can hopefully create an energy and a movement that we can really, you know, get that word out because, you know, we are fast to you go on Twitter right now and you see what's trending and it's, it's, you know, Kanye West doing something crazy. Um, but you, you, you know, you don't see, you know, Dr. So-and-so um, helping save the lives of, of people with diabetes. You know, you don't see, you know, the nutritionists, so-and-so helping, you know, turn back the hands of time and somebody's, you know, uh, uh, hypertension issues. So um, we, we got to start creating a way where we start trending and good folks like like everybody who's on here right now, um, you know, uh, who I see Danny on here, Kevin, Candice, and, uh, and, and folks who are trying to get this information and, and share this information and other folks out here that you got on here. And, and we got to be a strong community and, and become that trending topic of health and, and, and uh, positivity. Yeah. I think that's interesting. And I, I love, you know, tying into the church because it's such a great place for communal activities and food is all, is often a part of that. And, you know, you've got, a, you know, a, a place where a lot of people can, can disseminate information, but I think, you know, it doesn't matter what community, particularly in the United States, my gosh, we have the tools, we have the resources to to be strong, robust, vibrant, vigorous people. There's there's really no excuse that you can't get there for for what we have available to us as a community. And when I look at things, and I think there's 
even within the, the, the poorest communities in the U.S., I think it's still possible. And I think, uh, you know, it's just a matter of getting the information out there. And, you know, like you said, it's, it's brick by brick. You know, you build a house and, you know, you get just a few people in each community. And, and if they're the right people and they motivate. And that's what I've seen, you know, within this community here where we just have one or two little diamonds that, that expand. And then all of a sudden it's, you know, it used to be that old brick. Uh, uh, shampoo commercial i told two friends and they told two friends and on and you know after after a few times you've got you've reached millions of people so it's it's awesome to see that um charles where can people go we're running low on time where can people go to find out more about your 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 documentaries more about yourself maybe your social media where do they go for that stuff definitely and one last thing too as well one of the things we did on what we're shooting right now is i went to a local bodega and they were literally the highest rate of sales for blunts for marijuana. But they said that they do carry fruits and vegetables. And he said that the people actually will come in there if they're there to get fruits and vegetables. So once again, the lack of access at times um, is a key in, in these you know, lower, class, lower and income communities. But as far as me, I, I mean, I think I'm all over the place. All you got to do is type in Charles Maddox, M-E-T-T-O-C-K-S. Um, that's my you know, Instagram. That's my Twitter. Um, my website is charlesmaddox.com. Uh, my my uh, <clears throat> website for our production company is Bella and Ellie Media, B-E-L-L-A-A-N-D, uh, Ellie, E-L-L-E, media.com. And um, yeah, so I'm, I'm definitely not hard to find. And I look forward to, you know, whoever, you know, is on this call reaching out and saying hello and me pointing them in the right direction so they can check out these series. Because to be honest, these series that we've shot are some of the most amazing TV shows, period. Not just because, you know, uh, I think we, you know, I played a part in putting them together. But when you see the love, you see the, the, the growth, you see the passion, when you see the ups, the downs. Um, this is this is a reality series, a doctor reality series like you've never seen. And, and then when you see them win, I think we could all relate to each one of them. And uh, so I look forward to talking to you guys. And thank you, Hannah, and everybody else on. And um, and thanks me, thank you for having me on, Sean. Yeah. And uh, I hope we continue to do some amazing work for you, work together. And, and I got a, I got a, I got a spot for you on the next show. So <laughs> definitely, I'm serious. Definitely, let's let's stay in touch. Yeah. Well, let me know, Sean. I'll be happy to help in any way I can. You know, uh, you know, I I, I love to, I love this stuff, and and I can I, I can get after. I, I I think I can help motivate people. But anyway, Charles, thank you so much. Have a great evening in Paris. Um, don't eat too much. Uh, Pan chocolat or whatever you eat down there and uh, have a good time. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Okay. Bye, everybody. See you tomorrow. Take care, folks. Bye, Charles.